वेलकम बैक माई YouTube फैमिली आई एम योर इंस्ट्रक्टर माई नेम इज राशिद लेट मी टेल यू समथिंग इफ यू आर सीरियस अबाउट मास्टरिंग एक्सेल टू डेज वीडियो इज द वन यू कैन नॉट मिस दीज टेन पीवर टेबल ट्रिक्स और गेम चेंजर्स दैट विल सेव योर टाइम बूस्ट योर प्रोडक्टिविटी एंड हेल्प यू टू हैंडल डेटा लाइक अ प्रो वेदर यू आर इन अकाउंट फाइनेंस और एनी सेक्टर इफ यू आर वर्किंग विद डेटा दिस इज द सीक्रेट ट्रिक्स टू इनहेंस योर डेटा एनालिसिस स्किल्स ट्रस्ट मी वंस यू लर्न दीज डेट नो गोइंग बैक सो स्टे ट्यून दिस कुड बी आर टर्निंग पॉइंट फॉर यू सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल प्रेस कंट्रोल ए टू सिलेक्ट द डेटा देन गो टू इंसर्ट एंड अप्लाई अ पीवर टेबल now i will paste the dates into rows and sales into values right click on the dates in your pivot table select group now choose how you want to group the data first of all i'm going to group the data by years again going to group and select data by months again right click select group and selecting data by quarter lastly i'm going to group the data by years and months similarly right click select group and here i will be selecting month and year This trick will make your data look much more organized and meaningful. Here you can see our data is organized into years, month and we can analyze the sales for both years. You can add custom calculations within your pivot tables using calculated fields. This help you perform operations that are not present in the original data set. Let's assume in my data set I don't have the total sales column, so I removed this column. Right click and delete this Now press control A to select all data and go to insert and apply pivot table here. Here I'm pasting region to rows then I will refresh the data of the pivot table. Now you can see sales field gone as i already deleted from the data set i don't have sales column here go to the pivot table analyze click on fields items or sets select calculated field and here type the total sales now i'm selecting the retail sales plus wholesale press this button Now you can see more you can visit here and you can see this is my total sales in this section of this episode we will learn how to use pivot tables to show data in different ways like percentages differences and running totals this trick will help you to get more insight from your data so let's get started first select all your data by pressing control a then go to the insert tab at the top and from the options click on pivot table a new window will appear Now in the pivot table drag the date field into the rows after that drag the sales into the values next right click on the date column in the pivot table from the menu click on group in the box that appears select months then click okay this will group your sales by months Now let's show sales as a percentage of the total sales to do this drag the sales field again into the values area right click on the sales values go to show values as and choose percentage of grand total For example you will see that January sales are 8.29% of the total sales which is 7910.79 Similarly February sales are 7.49 of the total sales Next I will show you the difference in the sales compared to the previous month Again drag the sales field into the values area right click on the sales values Go to show values as and this time select difference from 
in the box select previous for example february sales are 62.73 units less than the january and march sales are 17.32 units more than the february this shows the difference between months basically here we are comparing the current month with the previous month finally let's create a running total drag the sales feed once again into the value area right click go to show values as and choose the running total Select month as the base and click OK. This will show the running total sales. For example, the running total for Jan and Feb is 1 to 48.41 and for January, Feb and March combined, it will be 1858.57. By the time we reach December, the total is 7910.79. And that's it. In just a few easy steps, we have learned how to display data as percentages, differences and running totals in the pivot tables. In this section of this episode, I will show you how easily refresh all pivot tables in your workbook with just one click. If you have multiple pivot tables in your sheet, this trick will save you a lot of time. So let's get started. First, if you have added more data in your original data source and you have more than one pivot tables in your file, you will need to update all the pivot tables so they can show the new data. If you will select the pivot tables one by one, it will take more time. Instead of updating each pivot tables one by one, here's an easy way to refresh all the data at once. Go to any pivot table in the sheet, then go to the top and click on data tab. Under the data tab, you will see the refresh all button. Click on it. That's it. This will refresh all the pivot tables in your workbook in just one click. So in this section of the episode, I will show you how to add slicers in pivot table and explain some of the benefits of using slicers. Slicers help you to filter your data in a very visual and interactive way making it easier to analyze your data so let's get started first of all i will make a copy of this sheet and rename it this new sheet will be where i show you how to add slices and work with them now click anywhere inside the pivot table then go to the insert tab at the top and select slicer in this example i will add slices of region and territory Next, select Region Slicer and go to the Slicer tab at the top and set the number of columns to this will make the slicer easier to view and work with. When I select a region like Central, the pivot table will automatically update to show only the stats for that region. This makes the data dynamic and interactive. I can also change the territory from the other slicer. When I choose a region like Central, it will show me only territories that belong to that region. This helps us filter and view data more clearly. Slicers are great because they make it easy to filter data with just one click. They also provide a clear visual way to control your pivot table plus you can combine multiple slicers for more specific filtering like in this case we can filter the data by region and territory at the same time in this part of the video i will show you how to connect one slicer to multiple pivot tables this is very useful feature because it allows you to control and filter all your pivot tables at once with just one slicer so let's get started first let's select the slicer that we want to connect to multiple pivot tables and then go to the slicer tab at the top now in the slicer tab click on report connections a box will appear showing all the pivot tables in this workbook select all the pivot tables that you want to connect to this slicer and press ok now let's see how this works if i select north in the slicer and then go to the report of region the report is filtered to show the data only for north region this means all the connected pivot tables are now filtered by this slicer if i deselect the slicer you will notice that all the regions are showing again this is how powerful it is to connect one slicer to multiple pivot tables. First, click anywhere inside your pivot table, pivot table options. 
Now in the option box, go to the data tab. Here you will see an option called refresh data. Click OK. From now, whenever you open the file, your pivot table will automatically refresh with the latest data. This way, you don't need to manually refresh the pivot table each time you open the workbook. Press Ctrl A to select all the data. Then go to the insert tab and in insert a pivot table. The pivot table is created. Add region and territory to the rows. and add sales to the value section. By default, when you apply this, the pivot table will be in compact view. Basically, this is showing a tabular format. So let's first change it back to the compact view to understand it better. Go to design, at the top, click on the report, layout and select compact form. Now notice how both region and territory are placed in a single column. This design can be confusing when analyzing data because the two fields are in the same column, making it harder to see the data for analysis purpose. Now let's change the design to the tabular view for better analysis. Again go to the design tab, click on report, layout and select tabular form then click on repeat all items now you can see that region and territory are in separate columns this design is much clear especially for analysis because you can easily compare data between regions and territories without mixing them in the one column let's simplify our report i will start by excluding the region field so now we have territory wise sales only now I want to see only the top 5 territories by sales. To do this, right click on the territory, go to the filter and choose top 10. Here I will change it from top 10 to top 5. This will update the report to show only top 5 territories by sales. This filter is very useful for analysis because it helps you to focus on your best performing territories. By looking at the top 5, you can understand which areas bring the highest sales and make strategic decisions based on that. In this section of the episode, I'm going to show you how to stop your pivot table columns from changing size when you make selections with slicer. If you have noticed that every time you select a slicer option, the column width changes. Here's how to stop that. First right click anywhere in the pivot table, then select pivot table options. Now find the options that says auto fit column width on update. Uncheck this box, then click OK. Now you adjust the column width manually. It will stay the same. Even when you change slicer options, no more resizing. Sometimes your pivot table may have blank cells. If you want to fill these with a specific value like zero, it's easy to do. Right click on the pivot table again and select pivot table options. Now look for the setting for empty cells, show and type the value you want like 0 or any other value. You can also add any other value like a dash or even a word. This is also helpful if you have error values and want to display something else. So after typing 0 here, now I will press OK. That's it. Now you know how to lock column width and fill empty cells in your pivot table. I hope this helps you work better with pivot tables. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this episode helpful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more easy Excel episodes. Your support means a lot. See you in the next episode. Goodbye.